Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are learning the fundamental concepts of software testing. And we are still continuing with our fifth chapter that is test management and continuing ahead with 5.1, the test planning. And as a part of this tutorial, we'll be talking a bit on the context of the test work products which we generally create as a part of our test process. When it comes to the test work products, of course, there are many such work products which are generally created. Now, the most important thing to understand here is a basic definition to work product. First of all, work product is any sort of uh, working information which can be used by the testing team or any other stakeholder for their reference. Now, we do have business work products. We do have design work products. We have development work products. Similarly, we do have our test work products. And it's been considered that the more you have the better documentation or not exactly pushing for the detailed documentation every time, but most importantly, having those minimum required set of work products, which would be helpful for determining how exactly the process is going on, what exactly we are expected to do, or what exactly we have been doing so far to justify or help other stakeholders understand the progress made so far. And also helps uh, the business understand the most important part of our testing progress, right? So there are a few uh, necessary stake uh, on the work products which we generally take care of from the testing side. And as we're calling them as test work products, it is pretty useful to understand that these are created as a part of the test process, right? Now, there are a lot of work products which we create as a part of test uh, process altogether, but not all of them are major contributors to the overall process. Now, there are some of them which are generally contributing widely to cross-functional teams as well as to the other stakeholders within the software development lifecycle. And some of them are like test strategy or test approach, test plan, the level test plan, or sometimes the test conditions or test cases as well, and the progress report and summary report. Now, just a quick outline to determine what exactly this documentation or work products are. Now, test strategy is the overall approach of testing of a particular project. If you remember principle number six, which certainly said that we are going to test different projects with different approaches. That means two different applications, two different products are not tested with the same approach as they might be different in context and the subject matter. Now, this is where an approach will be determined and a strategy will be defined in order to test a different project altogether. On the other hand, once this strategy has been defined, which is at very high level, the same will be elaborated with set of actions what we need to perform by following this strategy. For an example, your strategy could be risk-based testing, where you're going to identify all possible risk areas in your project and product, and according to that, your planning activities will be performed. For example, how much testing to be performed in particular areas, what kind of documentation you need for areas where you have risk identified, how many test cases will be written, and when will that be executed. Now, of course, all your planning activities certainly include like, you know, defining the uh, required infrastructure, the effort, resources, performing set of activities, documentations, automation, all that will be defined according to the strategy. So the master test plan or test plan would have all sort of activities defined according to the strategy. Now that's another work product which is created separately. Sometimes organizations prefer to merge their strategy with that of the plan and call it as master test approach or master test plan. So most of the companies can say that we don't create two different documentation calling out explicitly as test strategy one document and test plan as another document, right? They can sometimes combine it together and call it out as one of them. On the other hand, again, for the required, for example, if I'm talking about some specialized testing like performance security, they are processed within themselves. They're just not a standalone level like unit testing integration. They have a lot of other things to take care of and could be taking, you know, critical informations to be captured. So we may look forward to have the level test plan and it's not restricted that 
only non-functional uh, levels should have test plan dedicated for them. Even unit testing, integration testing can have if you have anything specific to document, right? Similarly, uh, to tell you more about the test condition and test cases, we have covered a lot of tutorials earlier in our chapter one, and we have told you that test conditions are set of scenarios which you derive from the specification and test cases are further breaking them down into the real steps. Now, test cases can be logical, can be concrete. Logical means high level, one liner. Concrete means detailed, the tabular form, which we have discussed in our tutorials earlier. And uh, these are another set of work products which we mainly create as a part of our life cycle. Now also to add, when we continue with working on the execution part, performing necessary tests on the application, it becomes a very important step for us to let our stakeholder know that what this testing is exactly doing, what the QA team is performing, how much they are done, how much more to go, what kind of defects they are facing, how many defects are yet you know, to be fixed, or how many of them are critical and awaiting kind of resolution, so there are a lot of such information which you consistently keep sharing with different other stakeholders, including the project management, to make sure that they are aware where we are and how much more time do we need to complete the work. If there's anything coming on your way, they will look forward to resolve them, assist you to get your blockers being removed so that testing can proceed smoothly, right? Now, that's one thing that is progress support which is shared or created consistently at different milestones and shared across with all the necessary stakeholders. But there's another report called as test summary report, which summarizes everything what you did in the entire end-to-end -end test process, right from the planning till the accomplishment of the exit criteria and closing on the testing life cycle. And this is again prepared at the end of the project once to be shared with everyone, including various other stakeholders to give them an insight that, hey, this is what the testing process went through, and this is how we have achieved the goals which we defined initially while doing the overall test planning, right? Now, these are some of the major documentation team. Of course, there will be many other, you know, minute information like defect, in, defect report, test coverage, traceability matrix. All these are various work products which we create. But it's not that it's really, you know, kind of as a work product, it might be visible to you. This is not created explicitly as a report, but yes, they all do exist and they are also work product to give you a lot of information, right? So keeping it short and simple, this is where we wanted to give you a quick introduction to various documentation or professionally work products, which we create as a part of the testing lifecycle. I hope you got a good clarity here. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.